Hello class, to this video today is a continuation of our intro to motion video, the concepts of motion, where we started talking about linear motion. This particular video, we're going to remind you about the equations that we're talking about average velocity and average acceleration. And we're going to talk also, accelerate, sorry, let me fix that. And we're also going to talk about motion graphs and how to get position and velocity and acceleration from graphs. I first want to remind you, though, for my class, this semester we are using this version of the test notes. So you have access to these test notes on the modules page. So chapter one, concepts of motion, is what was covered in that previous video where we were talking specifically about linear motion. As a reminder, these are the test notes that you have access to this semester, and these are the test notes you will be using when you take the tests. You, ha you can download them, so you can use your own copy while doing homework, so that you are familiar with them. I really suggest and highly recommend doing that. So the previous video talking about concepts of motion was from chapter one. Chapter one, where we're talking specifically about linear motion, where objects will move in a straight line. Oops. This is a reminder right here to remember what delta, the change in something, represents. It's always the final value of that thing minus the initial value of that thing. The two equations we talked about in that previous video are average velocity. So this equation right here is what we specifically talked about. Of course, delta S represents final position minus initial position. And this equation over here is simply solving that equation for the final position. The other main equation we talked about was average acceleration. Delta V is this V final minus V initial. And the equation to the right is simply that equation solved for V final. So we're going to go back and talk about average velocity and acceleration in a motion diagram. This particular diagram doesn't have any specific reference to a specific situation, but it does talk about position. So we have position on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. It does represent straight line motion. So for example, something moving along the X axis. Whenever we talk about position, we must have an origin. So I'm just going to draw an origin here. This is my origin. When I look at the graph and I look at this position at time equals zero, I can tell that whatever the object is that is moving through this position is initially one meter away, specifically to the right, because this position graph is above the origin, meaning positive values. And so this object starts out initially to the right of the origin. As we look at this first second, the position increases as a straight line. And after that one second has passed, if we dot our way over, we can see that this object is now at two meters. So at two seconds, oh sorry, at one second, at one second, the, this object is now at 
the position of two meters, meaning two meters to the right of the origin. Going back and looking at the graph again between one and two, it's traveled farther this time because at time equals two seconds, it's now approximately at three and a half meters. So it has traveled farther, which means it must have traveled faster in that next section. So if we remember what we mean by velocity, how fast something is going, if we were talking average velocity in these two seconds, average velocity in the first two seconds, Average velocity, remember the equation, average velocity is final position minus initial position over the change in time, how long it takes to go there. Our final position in those first two seconds is 3.5 meters. The initial position was one meter, and that just took two seconds. So we get 2.5 meters in two seconds, so the average velocity, I'm plugging it into my calculator just to make sure I do the right math, 1.25 meters per second. What this represents, you might remember, if we're taking a change in position, but change in position, if you come back to the graph, final position is that 3.5, initial position is that 1, that is a rise on the graph, and then the two seconds being on the horizontal axis is the run. So if I were to draw a line between point one and that, that initial position at time equals zero and the final position at time equals two seconds, the slope of this line is the average velocity. But if we look back to what we drew before between initial time zero and final time one second, those slopes do not match. Meaning in the first second it has, this object is traveling at a different speed than in the second second. You might remember when we talk about how fast something is going at a moment, you should hopefully have learned a little bit about this, either in calculus or in your engineering 1010 class, where if we want to know where something is going at an, or sorry, how fast something is going at an instant in time, we're talking about an instantaneous velocity. Meaning the velocity being delta S over delta T as delta T goes to zero. Meaning very, very, very short periods of time looking between one moment on the graph and something immediately next to it on the graph. So I'm drawing on the graph between two specific moments. What that ends up giving us is the slope of the tangent line. Now, the instantaneous velocity ends up being the slope of the tangent line on a position versus time graph. Mathematically, that means velocity is the derivative of the position function with respect to time. In this particular case, we don't have a function, but if we did have a function, we could also just take the derivative and that would give us an equation that described the velocity as a function of time. So let's look at this picture again. In this first set second, this 
first second on the graph, this line is straight. If the slope is constant, in that second, then the average velocity, that's my abbreviation for average, equals the velocity at any instant in that time frame. Okay. Now, the first average velocity we drew and drew the slope was for the whole two seconds. But if we focus on just that one second, I'll draw it below, we had a straight line. And so if we were to find the average velocity during that second, we would get the same answer as calculating the slope in that first second. So in the first second, the average velocity would be a final position, so I'm just going to plug in my numbers into the same equation. I just have different numbers. So it would be a final position of 2 meters minus the initial position of 1 meter divided by the 1 second. So 1 meter over 1 second, the average velocity in that time period is 1 meter per second. Which, of course, is smaller than the 1.25 meters per second for the first two seconds. So this, looking at this, may be a reminder for many of you. If not, try to reason through the different average velocities in these individual seconds on the graph. But let's go ahead and talk about what's happening in the succeeding seconds. So we know in the first second, the average speed is, or average velocity rather, is one meter per second. The average speed is also one meter per second. In this particular case, average velocity would be one meter per second to the right. Remember, velocity is a vector. So we know whatever this object is, is traveling to the right. In the second second, in this time period from here to here, we can find the average velocity if we wanted. We'd take that final position minus the initial position and divide by the one second. So ultimately we know that the object is traveling one meter per second here, it's traveling a bit faster here. But now what about this time period between the two seconds and three seconds? If we go back to this idea that the instantaneous velocity is the slope of the tangent line, well, that slope is zero. Slope is zero here. In that whole time, the velocity in this time frame is zero, meaning the object's just staying at rest for that second. As we continue to this next section, we see the object is now moving to the right again. But notice, as we go up towards point 5, the slope of the tangent line, if I start drawing tangent lines, the slope of that tangent line is changing. In fact, at point 5 exactly, the slope is perfectly horizontal. Oh, I changed my cursor. So the slope is perfectly horizontal, meaning at this exact moment in time, the velocity is zero, but just for that split second. As we continue, if we draw in a tangent line, the slope of that tangent line is now negative, and in this period of time, that first short little bit, it's getting steeper. <laughs> 
What that means, of course, is that the object is now heading to the left. So remember, when we're talking velocity, we're talking vectors, meaning they have a direction. And the direction is entirely dependent on the coordinate system we are using. And so a negative slope here is going to mean moving back towards this origin. We can see that on the graph. This object's going to get back to that same starting point of one meter. So the only way to do that, if the object's to the right, it has to head back to the left. So we can see that from the graph. What does the steeper mean? And that, it just gets steeper in that little first section. From here, it looks pretty constant, but it's still negative, meaning heading to the left. If the slope is changing, then the speed is changing. So what it's, in this little section where the slope gets steeper, the object is speeding up, And because it's a negative slope, it's speeding up towards the left direction, towards the origin. So looking at our graphs of motion, we can look at both average velocities. We can at least estimate, if not calculate, instantaneous velocities. In this section up here, where it's moving to the left and speeding up, we don't have enough information to actually calculate a numerical value for velocity, but we can deduce that the object is moving to the left and speeding up, simply because of how that slope of the tangent line is changing. So main note, if we have a graph of position versus time, the slope of the tangent line will give us the velocity at an instant, at whatever instant we're drawing that tangent line. If we're looking at an initial point and a final point and just taking the difference in position, then we're looking at an average velocity. So we're going to build on this as we continue. Mathematically, let's scroll down a little bit. We're going to look at that graph coming up in just a minute. So mathematically, if we have a graph of position versus time, then we can look at the slope between two points, or meaning two moments in time, to find the average velocity. We can look at the slope of the tangent line to find the instantaneous velocity. Now, we may not have the numerical values like that previous, ex previous graph we were looking at, but we can at least analyze whether the object would be speeding up or slowing down, that sort of thing. Mathematically as well, if we have a function that describes the motion, specifically the position, we can find the average velocity if we know the final position and the initial position that we're talking about and the time frame. We'll find as we go along, though, typically we're more interested in what we call the instantaneous velocity. I mean, you're driving down the freeway, the cop pulls out his radar and is looking at you, seeing how fast you're going. Certainly, you cannot argue what you were doing on an average. They care about what you're doing at the moment. They want to know how fast you're going at that instant. That's what we mean by instantaneous velocity. Now, 
Granted, in a car, we would just look at the speedometer. We would know how fast we were going. Direction would be whether we were driving north, south, east, west. But mathematically, if we do have a function that describes the position, we can take the derivative of that function with respect to time, and that will give us the function that describes the velocity of that particular object. Now, I do want to mention one more thing on this graph up here. When we talk about this spot where we said the object was heading to the left and speeding up, we do need to be able to reason through whether an object is speeding up or slowing down and what direction it is headed in. But if you remember from that previous video, we need to also be able to say whether the acceleration is positive or negative. So if I have an object whose velocity points to the left, Acceleration, speeding up, means the acceleration must be in the same direction. Same direction. If you think of acceleration as a type of push or pull in order to make the object do what it's going to do, speed up or slow down, you would have to push on an object to the left to make it continue to the left and go faster and faster and faster. We talked about that in the previous video. What that means here is that both the velocity and acceleration are negative. Understanding the positive and negative signs is essential in order to start using our equations, which we'll talk about that as we continue through different equations. All right, let's go down to these other graphs that I have. This particular setup, we have a position graph, a velocity graph, and an acceleration graph. Let's look at position for just a minute. Notice the units. Position is on the vertical axis again. Time is on the horizontal axis again. We can see that just by looking at the units. Time, of course, is not measured in meters. That's why we know the vertical axis is position. And then seconds, of course, is time, and that is why the horizontal axis is time. So initially, at time equals zero on this graph, it's just where the graph intersects the y-axis. We can say that the initial position is positive 3 meters. And again, positive simply because this is the positive direction on the vertical axis, and down here is the negative direction. What that means, again, if we were talking about horizontal motion, with some sort of, oh, let me move my origin elsewhere, actually, because this one doesn't stay above the whole time. Put the origin in the middle. Whatever this, whatever object this position graph represents, it tells us that the object is initially here at three meters. Now, again, we don't have to go second by second, but I want to take just a second to talk about this. At one second, it's still at three meters. At two seconds, it's just barely starting to move. I'll leave race so you can still see it. It is still at three meters. So these first two seconds, the object is at rest meaning velocity of zero. It's not going anywhere. You can't have a velocity and stay in the same position. As time goes on, though, let's look at the tangent line. So right exactly at two seconds, the tangent line is horizontal. But then it starts to change. 
In this general region here, it looks fairly constant, but in this period right here, the slope of that line is changing. Is the slope positive or negative? Well, the slope is negative. I can see that. Rise over run is negative. And is getting steeper. What does that mean? Negative slope means a negative velocity. Steeper means the numerical value, the speed, is increasing. So in this section, the object's moving to the left and speeding up. Just in that little time frame. When the slope's fairly constant in here, it's traveling at a constant velocity, meaning the same speed the whole time and the same direction. Okay. As we near the seven seconds, right at exactly seven seconds, the, hor the tangent line will be horizontal again, meaning the velocity is exactly zero right there. As we approach here, we go from having this constant negative slope to having still a negative slope, but it's getting less steep. So the slope is still negative, but it's getting less steep or shallower or smaller, however you want to word that. That means the object is still moving to the left, but it's slowing down. The acceleration has to be opposite the velocity, so the acceleration would be pointing to the right. So positive acceleration, negative velocity in that little section. If we pass the seven second mark and start heading to eight, let me erase what I have right there, we see the slope of the tangent line now getting more and more steep, but positive. A positive slope getting steeper means the object is now moving to the right, meaning a positive velocity and then steeper, if it's getting steeper, then it's speeding up to the right. Meaning the acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity. They're both positive. Now, you can also reason through this to some extent by just looking at the position. It starts out at three meters, okay, now it's going to get closer and closer to zero meters. That means it's heading towards the origin. When the position goes negative, we're moving to the left side of the origin. So that's a totally valid way to reason through as well. It is good though to think in terms of slopes as well. What I want to look at really quick here is they've drawn, this particular diagram has drawn the graph of velocity versus time if we look at the y-axis, the units on the y-axis are meters per second. So this vertical axis is velocity, while the horizontal axis is time. This graph is essentially showing us how this velocity is changing as time goes on. Going back, we said in the first two seconds, because the object wasn't going anywhere, it was at rest. That's what this horizontal line means. The velocity is staying at zero for those first two seconds. At this time, three seconds, the velocity is going to negative values. 
right? It's labeled as negative two, negative four. This means negative velocity. As we get go from say negative five, sorry, 0.5 meters per second, negative one meters per second, negative 1.5 meters per second. That is describing our negative velocity and the speed is increasing. Speed, remember, is just the absolute value. So 0.5 is smaller than one, one is smaller than 1.5. Negative means to the left, the speed shows it's getting bigger. This portion here is showing us a horizontal line, meaning a constant negative velocity. That's what we said for this little section in here, a constant negative velocity because the slope is constant and it is negative. As we started to approach the seven seconds, it was still moving to the left, meaning a negative velocity, but it was slowing down. That's why we're getting less and less negative. Here, the seven seconds is the instant the velocity is zero, right? We're passing through the origin of this graph, but this graph is representing velocity. And so that means at this instant of seven seconds, the velocity is zero. But then it becomes positive and gets bigger. And then this last part they're representing as constant because we have a fairly constant slope in the position graph. It can be a little confusing when we look at the velocity graph, partly because we're still trying to think slope and we're mixing up our position versus velocity graph. So this middle graph is representing what the velocity is at specific moments in time with this specific position graph. I'm gonna erase this so that we can go from velocity to acceleration. We didn't mention this before specifically, but if we can take the derivative of the velocity with respect to time to get to acceleration, that means if we have a graph of velocity versus time, then the acceleration will be the slope of that graph. And I apologize for squeaky toys in the background. My dog wants to play. All right, so let's just take one more step here. We're looking specifically at velocity now. So let's move position. Well, no, I won't move it. So velocity is zero meters per second. We weren't moving those two seconds. That is a constant velocity. So constant velocity means there's no acceleration. Acceleration in physics always means a change in velocity, meaning speeding up, slowing down, or turning direction. Right now we're talking specifically linear motion, and so it will, acceleration will specifically apply to speeding up or slowing down. All right, so acceleration is zero in the first two seconds. In the next two seconds, Again, we noticed from the position graph that changing negative slope. We said the velocity is negative. That's why it's down here below zero and the speed was increasing. When I look at this slope, it is constant. It is negative. That's why the acceleration in this time frame jumps down to this negative value, specifically negative one meter per second squared, and it is constant. If the velocity is negative and the speed is increasing, the acceleration has to be in the same direction. And so we have this negative acceleration. How do we see that this jumps back to zero? Well, going to the position, or sorry, the velocity graph here, that's when our slope of the position graph was constant for that one second, 
we have a constant negative velocity. If you have a constant velocity, meaning constant speed and direction, there has to be zero acceleration because that's the definition of acceleration, a change in velocity in some period of time. From five seconds going onwards, we see a positive slope. We see the value of velocity going from negative numbers to positive numbers. So it's getting less and less negative. It's zero for a split second, and then it gets more and more positive. That's what this period represents. Because the slope is constant on the velocity graph is why acceleration is horizontal. This is a constant value of one meter per second squared. Why doesn't the acceleration part there though cross the horizontal axis? Well, if we go back to this situation, position or velocity, if we go back to either one in this section, we said first that the slope was negative, but it's getting less steep. That means the object's moving to the left, but slowing down. That meant the acceleration had to point to the right or be positive. So the acceleration stays constant this whole time in between the five and eight seconds. The acceleration stays positive and constant at one meter per second squared. We can read that, figure that out from the graph. What's happening is where we have a negative velocity at that moment, but it's getting less negative, less negative. If it's slowing down, the acceleration has to be opposite. So it needs to be positive. What happens is this object is moving towards the left, and then there's a split second right here where it stops, and it's turning around. This is called a turning point. It's turning around, and then it's now going to head to the right, going faster and faster, until we reach the eight seconds. This positive, constant acceleration positive, it's slowing it down, slowing down the negative velocity, and then speeding up the positive velocity. If you think about tossing a ball in the air, to graph tossing a ball in the air, the initial point would be where the ball was thrown from. So however high your hand is above the ground when it leaves your hand. So time equals zero would be when the ball leaves your hand. The motion would look parabolic. Where it ends is either going to be in your hand if you catch it, or it could be the ground, so I'm gonna call it Y for position, the ground. Let's say I don't catch it, I just let it fall to the ground. So the ball gets down to the ground. The position measured from the ground, Y, would be on the vertical axis, time, T, would be on the horizontal axis. Now, this would represent throwing a ball straight upwards. So the ball, we know, would have an initial velocity of however fast it left my hand. We know acceleration due to gravity is downwards. The value we're going to use is 9.8 meters per second squared. It turns out the value of the acceleration in gravity varies dependent on altitude. 
It doesn't vary much, though. It stays at 9.8, regardless of what altitude we might be at on Earth. That's why we're going to use 9.8. And so as the ball continues upwards, we know it's going to slow down and slow down and slow down and eventually get to a maximum height where at that split second, that moment in time, the velocity is zero. But it doesn't stay there because there's an acceleration due to gravity. That means the ball is going to start coming back down and head downwards and downwards, going faster and faster on the way down and eventually hit the ground. In our assumption of no air resistance, we would find the ball at the same height with the same speed because that velocity is changing by the same amount every time because the acceleration is constant. Looking at the graph, the slope of the tangent line is positive, 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 but getting shallower and shallower, less steep. At this peak, this is the maximum height, the slope is zero. That's where the ball has reached the maximum height and is turning around. And then from there, the t slope of the tangent line gets more and more steep and negative. So negative slope, means a negative velocity, which means in the y direction it's headed down. The positive slope means a positive velocity, which in the y direction means headed up. Okay. So we can get a lot from position versus time graphs. From here, we're going to move to doing some examples using the calculus relationships, being able to calculate the instantaneous velocity or acceleration, or even vice versa, by the way. I will make a quiz video where I go through some conceptual questions regarding the graphs or relating to graphs like this. So make sure you go through those to test your understanding and then continue moving on to the calculus relationships.